um, I'll, I'll just close with this. Romans 8.15. Um, yeah. You can read this together because I, I'm tired of hearing my own voice. <laughs> right? For you did not receive the spirit of to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. This is an incredible verse. Because in another, another version will say, you, you did not receive the spirit of fear. Another version reads, you have not received, you did not receive the spirit of fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Now what's, the, what's the opposite of slavery? Freedom? What's the opposite of fear? Faith? But that's not what Paul writes. He says you have not received the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of? That's incredible. What's the, what's the opposite of adoption? Orphans? So let's reread this, okay? Yeah, I'm sure I'm not committing any heresy by, by doing this. Uh, you, for you did not receive the spirit of orphan, of an orphan. For you did not receive, you did not receive the spirit of an orphan to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, as children, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Here's a question for you. Orphans, can you tell me how orphans feel? Insecure? Afraid? Rejected? Uh, in an orphanage, they're competing constantly for food, for blessing, right? Yeah, lonely, all those, all those insecure, don't know where my next meal is going to come from, don't know what's going to happen with me, perpetually insecure, yeah? He came to free us from that and give us a spirit of adoption. A million dollar question, I don't have a million dollars, but I think I do, it's hiding somewhere. Do you know who you are? Do you know that you're a son and a daughter? Do you know that you're a prince and a princess? Do you know that? Do you know that? I'm going to continue reading uh, Romans 18. Uh, sorry, pardon me, 818. Verse 18, yeah. Let's read this together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. 31 to 39. Yeah, let's just keep reading with me. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God, God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a good place to say amen. amen. All right. Um, just one more thing. I, I just want to read uh, with you. I'm going to close. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, I'm just going to read from verse 7 to 20. In case you found my rant really boring, I'm sure you're going to get something out of, out of, these, out of these verses, yeah? Yeah, from, seven, from verse 7 to 20, let's just read it again. Uh, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? Verse 8, yes, we are of good courage. And we would rather be away from the body and at home 
with the Lord. Verse 9. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. Can you tell your neighbor, we make it our aim to please him. Tell your neighbor that. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is also known to your conscience. For we are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us. Because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and, has give, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Can you tell your neighbor, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation, that is, that is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That right there is our message. Yeah? We have been given the, the ministry of reconciliation. If you're sitting and you think you don't have a title, you do. You're an ambassador. That's a pretty cool title. Can you tell anybody? That's a cool title. <laughs> <laughs> you're an ambassador. You're a king. You're a priest. It doesn't get better than that. What other title are you looking for? Yeah? You're an ambassador. I, I'll, I'll end with this quote.